We continue to reflect on his uh, rich and extraordinary legacy. Uh, we're joined by his son, Sam Pahad, who will also be uh, delivering a speech at the funeral later today. But however, just to reflect on the overwhelming response and the number of mourners that have come to pay respects uh, to your father, what can you tell us uh, as the SABC viewers at home? Uh, it's obviously a time of great sadness for all of us, but it's also, as you can see, a celebration and a sense of a kind of joy at the life incredibly well lived and the role that my father played in the struggle and afterwards in post-liberation politics both in South Africa and internationally and I think you can see that from the gathering of friends and family and comrades who are here say to pay tribute but to remember and to, to think back with, with happiness about that incredible contribution and his life. And your father as well as your uncles uh, as well as your grandparents uh, started in the uh, liberation struggle quite early. Um, what was it like as a child uh, seeing your parents and uh, your extended family uh, quite invested and devoted to the liberation struggle beyond the borders of South Africa? So it was something which I would obviously grew up with although I was born in the UK and, and live in the UK. My mother was very active in the British anti-apartheid movement so I kind of grew up very much in that community in exile of people who were struggling and fighting to get home but it was a wonderful spirit and a joy and what's been lovely is the kind of messages from people in London, mm. comrades, British comrades but also international comrades who kind of remember my dad with such fondness both for his political stuff but also as I say the friendship mm. um, and the kind of companionship that came there. So growing up in that and then being able to come now to visit South Africa as I do very often mm. and kind of see that legacy and then talk to people about what's still happening now. We still have a long way to go but obviously the role they played was instrumental in getting us this far. And your father will be receiving quite a fitting send-off in the official funeral that was declared a few days ago. Um, how would the family uh, like him to be remembered? I think, as I say, with that, that joy and happiness, his laughter, his spirit, the fact that he never had a bad word to say about anybody, um, I think, you know, it's a close family to Pahads and it's a, a big extended family to Perex as well, his incredible wife, Angina. Mm. And so I think everyone coming together just to remember that and keep that in our hearts as we go forwards. Thank you very much. That was Mr. Sam Pahad, the son of the late anti-apartheid activist. Now, earlier this morning, Sam, we spoke to Sister Mbali Radha Mube, who was the caregiver to the late anti-apartheid activist uh, leading up to his last days uh, here on earth. She reflected quite fondly on those last moments and what he said and how he was surrounded by his loved ones. Let's take a listen to that interview that we uh, conducted earlier this morning. For the short time I knew him, he was one of the best people in the world that I've ever met. And towards his last days, he always wanted me to be next to him. I remember this other day in the morning, he asked me, are you okay, Mbali? And those were part of his last days and last words when he was able to speak. So I said, no, I'm okay. He said, okay, if you are okay, then it means I'm okay. Then I said, why ask? He said, no, I'm just checking on you. So he was that one loving man. He was that one kind man. We always appreciated everyone. We showed love to him, around him, in every circumstance. Mm -hmm. So far with me, he was one of the greatest people. Mm -hmm. So it's a sad loss, not only to the family, but also to us as the upcoming generation. And you were taking care of him up until his final days, right? Yes, I was with him until his last days, until his last breath. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you talk us through that final moment? Uh, the early hours of the morning, it was around nine-ish. When I just went to greet him and he couldn't respond but physically you could see he was responding for he had lost his speech so I just held his hand and he didn't want to let go until he passed away mm. so he had to hold my hand until he passed away mm. was he surrounded by just you or were his loved ones also there the whole family was there mm -hmm. yes and what was the response um, following the passing uh, for me it was a bit hard because he had his drip on his legs so I just had to take out the drip and the family asked why are you taking out the drip and I said unfortunately you can't take it anymore then I went out the brother followed me I told him unfortunately he has left us so it took him time to respond to it and accept it then later on he said okay it's fine I like get a matter of time he went back to the room and informed the family
That was Sister Mube just giving us those final moments of the anti-apartheid activist Aziz Pahad. Now just to step out of frame to give you the last shots of the family home ahead of the expected journey to West Park Cemetery. The body is still currently in the home. You can see it's a hive of activity as we await those burial rites to be performed. Uh, we've seen figures such as the Gauteng Premier, Banyaza Lusufi, former First Lady, Zanele Mbegi, and other mourners and loved ones showing up to the home to pay their last respects. We expect that most of these mourners will be gathering at West Park Cemetery where they'll pay and give that final send-off to Mr. Aziz Pahad.